Okay, so for those of you that like spy movies, imagine that James Bond is on one side of the room, and on the other side is some code or something he needs to get to. And in his way is this web of lasers that will detect him at the slightest hint of a spy. Now, of course, being a good spy, he'll maneuver around the lasers, he'll do handstands and somersaults, he'll get to that code. Now, I don't study spy movies, but the idea of using lasers to detect things which usually like to go unseen is actually very common in both physics and biology. We're not trying to find James Bonds, though. We're trying to find, find things like proteins and molecules and cells. Now, how do we do this with lasers? Well, there's a method called surface plasmon resonance. The idea is this. You have some metal sheet, and you have a laser which shines at an angle. This creates a sort of hovering electric field on top of your metal. And this field is incredibly sensitive to effects, so much so that when you have really tiny particles fall on top, it resonates and shifts around that field. And what happens is you can detect those fluctuations and resonances, and then you pit those up and say, aha, I know exactly what's here and here and here. Now this is a good model, but it has a couple of downsides. The main one being it just isn't sensitive enough for our uses today. We need things that can detect things in the parts per trillion. This would be equivalent to just a few molecules in an entire room. These are very hard to detect. But if we have this graphene surface, and I'll show this later, it becomes much more sensitive. The other problem is that Things don't always like to attach to metal. When you have molecules and such that fall on the surface, they just don't want to attach. Organic cells, molecules, proteins made of carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, they don't really like to attach to silver and gold. So as I mentioned, this is where the graphene comes in. Graphene is this really miraculous material. It's a two-dimensional lattice of carbon atoms. And among its many properties, it solves both of these issues I brought up. So you put this flat graphene surface on, and instantly, almost a hundredfold, it's able to detect things that are incredibly sensitive, things that would otherwise slip through the cracks. It's also very nice because it's made of carbon, and things like to attach to carbon. So these organic molecules and such that may have been missed in the past are suddenly visible. So part of my group's research is to see how exactly do those fluctuations change when you have molecules attaching to the graphene, what really happens, and how do you measure those fluctuations in your electric field? Um, we hope at the conclusion of this research that we develop technologies that can find those really dangerous environmental toxins and biological toxins, or as I'd like to call them, the elusive James Bonds of the biological universe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>